but this is our what we call our minimum overnight setup got the awning on the side of the car which is very very easy to set up the pop-up shower tent and just the basics so that if we are traveling with the camper trailer and we're heading somewhere the way you cannot get in one day we can set this up overnight it's a very quick and easy setup instead of having to set up the camper trailer which involves an awful lot more effort the camper trailer is really going to be for places where we stay a week or more for sleeping we've got a camp cot and three different mattresses the one on the bed is actually an Aldi mattress I found that that is sort of a medium level the two on the floor the one on the bottom is an Oz Trail and the one on top is a Wild Country now as far as thickness and comfort goes the Oz Trail is by far the better mattress has a different kind of valve in it to the other two but the Wild Country mattress is awful I really wouldn't suggest anybody buys that brand the foam in it is not good memory foam it's very thin and on its own is practically useless that's why I have to use it with the Oz Trail underneath I found with two mattresses on the floor you don't get the cold coming up as much as you do if it's just a single mattress so it insulates you a bit from the cold that usually seeps up into your bones during the night from the ground in general the bed itself with a mattress on top seems to be a very comfortable way to go but as you can see from what we've got in the tent there even though we've got two of those stretcher type beds there's just not enough room to put two in so the option here is to have a couple of mattresses on the floor and one on the stretcher bed sleeping on the floor not as comfortable as I would like but possible so since these trips with the side awning on the 4x4 are only meant to be short term uh, it will do but at some stage I will probably replace that wild country mattress with something just a bit thicker just to keep the hips off the ground a bit more than they are at the moment got to say with the awning we've got on here awning and the annex this is absolutely the easiest thing we own to set up we've got four different setups and of the tent style things which includes a four-man tent the camper trailer and this awning and annex this is just so easy to put up it's 10 to 15 minutes maximum to get the thing up and then of course you've got to unpack your gear but just the actual setup time is brilliant it's lightweight it's easy to use nice big windows it's got the micro mesh on it so that the small insects can't get in which means at night you can have some lights on inside and still have your windows open as long as you don't go in and out too much and although we haven't used it much yet we are going to start using this a lot more so we'll have a lot more to say about it as we use it a couple of changes I'd like to see a place inside there for hanging a light and a couple of stitched in pockets so that you can stick your keys and your glasses and the essential stuff overnight that you want to find quickly in the morning that would be very useful but in general quite happy with the design of it the double roof is good that helps with sun it keeps it a little bit cooler and so far yeah we're loving this LD product we've, we've had the awning part of it for quite some time now and it's not showing any signs of wear we've only had the annex part for a short time and this is really the first time we're using it seriously out in the bush but yeah quite happy with it do keep your eye open for specials at Aldi because when they sell these things they're $200 we've seen it on special at $129 and somebody told us they picked up one for $100 so absolute bargain at $100
One of our latest camping gadgets is a water filter. Very simple inline water filter and it's great for sources where you've got water available to you like rainwater tanks that are not treated water. So you can run it through your filter. It'll do several thousand litres before it wears out. Even though it's not exactly fast, you can simply set it up from one bucket to another and allow it to flow. And it's like a water straw. You don't need to have the hose attached to it. It can screw directly into a water bottle. It has a screw top in here and you can suck directly on the end of it. You can put it into a plastic bag. There's a number of different ways it can be used. The way we'll use it is probably the way you can see here, directly from one bucket to the other. And it'll give us just a bit of extra fresh water. It'll save us from having to move from a site to town. Now yeah, the top bucket's almost empty. But it looks like it'll be a very handy little gadget, Dorothy's idea. So we'll be using that on our trips to filter any rainwater tanks that we come across and maybe river water as well. For quick trips we don't take away a bigger cooker and if there's a table available then we don't have to set up our own kitchen. Just using the single burner cookers with the replaceable gas canisters and that's good enough just to heat some food up for a one night stop. One of the things we like to do on short trips is to have pre-prepared meals. It makes life a lot easier if you just put something together at home, bring it out in the fridge or stick it in the freezer and then defrost it when you need it and then just warm it up on the day when you need to eat something. It doesn't work well for really long trips unless you've got a freezer but for short trips of two or three days it makes really good sense not to have to cook a full meal every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's my own food. If you're doing a really short trip and you don't want to carry a lot of milk or coffee or tea, one of the great options these days are these three-in-one packets. Basically you can boil your water, stick a packet of that in, and you've got your milk, your sugar or your tea. In this case that's tea, coffee, and the whole thing's just in one bag. You don't have to carry any liquids at all from your water so no extra milk and very easy to use very lightweight easy to just chuck in a takeaway container for an overnight trip like this makes life a lot easier so just one little tip if you're going away on a short trip grab some of these you can get the tea the tea is pretty good this is actually Malaysian it's called Taytarik and for powdered tea, not bad at all. I really don't like some of the brands of tea that are available for instant tea. You can of course use ordinary tea bags, but this stuff just adds something a bit different. And it comes with its own packets of sugar. Give it a go, not bad. This is yet another camping gadget that we picked up recently. Again, it's an Aldi 
product. We should uh, probably buy shares in their company with the amount of gear we're buying from them at the moment. But it's a rechargeable fan and you know those sort of days that it's just so stinky and hot and there's no breeze and you're dying for something to keep you cool. Well, this looks like it'll be useful because it runs off 240, off 12 volt and it has an internal rechargeable battery and as a little added bonus it also has a couple of lights on the fan so you can use it to keep cool and to see at the same time. Okay let's just pull it out the box and uh, give you a quick demo. Okay as you can see it's a pretty decent sized fan and it's got the 240 volt adapter down here and the cigarette lighter adapter for 12 volt and that of course will recharge your battery as well. The valves on both the World Country and the Audi bed are similar. They are the complex two-part valves. And four of them. You sort of wonder why there's a necessity for four valves. I'm just getting ready to fold them all up now, so... Release the valves, put it on the ground, and roll it up. The Austral valve is different to the other two. It just has a flip out section and an internal valve that you just flip around to let the air out or let it back in when you want to inflate it. These don't need any air pumps to inflate. All you do is open the valves and leave them and over time they will inflate themselves. It's not vital to have a seal on these like it is with an airbed because as you can see there's plenty of padding, especially in the Austral one. Good mattress this one, certainly one of the best ones we've had. And cheapest one we've ever had because it's one we picked up from an op shop for just 20 bucks. So keep your eyes open for camping gear in op shops. It's a really cheap way to pick some stuff up. It's always good to have a relatively clean surface to roll things up and fold things up on. So good to have a tarp or a bit of shade cloth or something down before you start folding things up. And after a bit of effort and a bit of puffing and panting, that's the size that the three mattresses fold up into. Thankfully these days they're actually making the covers big enough so that you don't have to roll the thing up as though it was done by a machine in the factory. That was a really good trick they used to do in the old days, make everything so tight. Once it came out from the factory and you pulled it out of the bag you could never get it back. So all three of these mattresses at least go back into their bags easily.